Hey there folks, Dr. Dave here with another EV3 Mindstorms video tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at the essentials of selection blocks. So let's have let's start. We'll begin by looking at a brick button selection program. Right, first thing we'll do is drag in a switch statement block. And we're going to change this parameter here to a brick button measure. So that's going to look at what brick button has been pressed. So we drag in our display block and we want to display an image so select the image option uh, we're going up to here and we're going into the image files and we want information and we're going to do a left arrow. Alright, now we want to look at the other possible options as well so in this case if we press a right brick button we're going to display a right arrow. So again, in information, right arrow. Now we want to add some more options. So we go up to here and click on add case. If we've got the up brick button, we're going to display our forward arrow. And then finally, we'll add one more case to represent our default case. So if the center button is pressed, then we will display, I'll oh, just do a thumbs up, I reckon. Thumbs up. There we are. Now, if we look at this one, at the moment, this has made the default case. So this means that if none of these cases are matched, it will go through whatever we've got here, go through the default case. So I'm going to change this one to default case. So in reality, that would mean that if I didn't have all of the possible buttons clicked or selected here, I could make this my default case. And if our brick button doesn't match up with one of these, it will go into the default case. Okay, so we've got our different cases selected for our uh, possible brick button presses. Now we need to add a couple of extra details into our code. The first thing is we want to actually wait until a brick button is pressed. So we're going to add a wait block and we're going to change that to brick button and we're going to wait until the brick button has changed. In other words, wait until it's been pressed. And then finally at the end, so we actually see our image displayed, we'll wait a brief period of time. As a second example of using the selection block, we're going to use the colour sensor to detect different colours and output a particular sound uh, depending on what colour we've detected. So to begin with, we'll introduce a switch block and we'll change the um, condition up here to use the colour sensor and we're going to measure the colour. Then we'll go through and add various cases. So to begin with, if we detect a blue colour, we will use a sound block here. And, and we'll go up here and choose an appropriate sound. In this case, if we look at colours under the sound files, we'll choose blue. blue. And we'll add a one second delay. Next we'll add additional cases for dealing with green, yellow and red colours. So next we'll deal with the case where no colour is detected. So we add an extra case here and add the no color case and we make this the default case so that will take into account both situation where no color is detected and when a color other than blue green yellow or red is detected such as black or white okay so that will do our basic detection and output a sound accordingly next we'll put this inside of a loop so we'll drag our loop block up here and connect this inside of here 
So we want to loop, continue the loop until we've detected a white color. What we can actually do here is we can select multiple colors to detect. We just want to detect one, so we'll switch the red one off. Right. Once we exit our loop, play a sound to say goodbye. <laughs>